So I managed to get in there at the time when there was nobody there. I got in absolutely first thing in the morning and I had it to myself for about half an hour and I'm sitting meditating at one end of the King's Chamber. And all you see in the King's Chamber is the sarcophagus, the sarcophagus without a lid. And we already know that there's a precision. It's, it's refused as being intentional by Egyptologists, but it's clearly intentional. There's a precision to the dimensions of the King's Chamber that give you a three, four, five triangle diagonally. It's not flat on a wall or flat on the bottom. It's, it's, it's hidden, but it's there. And it can only be there if the relationships are a certain way and they are a certain way. And it, it only works if you've built the golden ratio into the structure of the king's chamber. So I'm sitting there and I know all that and I know that this is perfect. But what's that sarcophagus doing there? Why is that there? If they are intent on perfection, that must have a perfect reason to be there. And I, I, I just, you know, I had this intuition and I thought, oh, it must be that. That the sarcophagus itself has a relationship. Its volume is a relationship to the overall volume of the king's chamber. That would make sense. They'd be saying, look, you're in this and it's perfect. It's Pythagorean theorem personified. It's golden ratio. It's built properly to tell you that. It's got stones in it that are marble. 80 tons, and you can't put a razor blade between them. They are butted up against each other, and you can't get a razor blade between them. They're so finely, perfectly laser cut. And it was done by Egyptians with copper tools and stones and a lot of time on their hands. I mean, it's not possible, but there it is. And you're sitting there, and you go, so I'm going, Shakespeare knew about this. He's telling us about this. He's pointing to it. He's got the geographic coordinates. He knows longitude. It's ridiculous. What is here? And I just went, oh, I bet it's that. And then I went home and did the math and realized that if you turn that sarcophagus on its side and slide it against the wall, you fit exactly five of them tight against the width of the king's chamber. And you fit exactly six of them through the height. If, if you don't turn it on its side, then it, it doesn't happen. So, okay. So that, that's interesting. And then I, you calculate then how many would there be overall if you put them, fill up the king's chamber. And it turns out that it reflects the fine structure constant. And the fine structure constant is probably the most mysterious constant of all. One, it's 1 over 137. It's so deeply mystical in its in its embedded meaning that no every major physicist and scientist um Feynman Wolfgang Pauli they've all said what is it about it's the big 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 question what's so special about the number 137 why that number but it's that the sarcophagus is the one and the the rest of the empty space around it is 137 so it's telling you Maybe, you know, because people are going to go, oh, come on. They didn't build the pyramid to tell us they knew the fine structure constant. It's the one constant that uh, has a wonderful video of a, of a scientist online saying, if we wanted to convey one thing to space aliens, it would be the number 137, because that's the one thing that is dimensionless. They would understand. We could, we could tell them that number and they would get, oh, they are scientifically advanced. Hello, you know, that would be the handshake to the aliens, would be the fine structure constant.